To motivate the rest of this video, let's take a look at why path tracing is so important and just so good at what it does. Path tracing operates by casting rays into the specified scene and tracing their intersections, usually using an algorithm called ray tracing. It calculates how they interact with the scene objects and their materials at these intersections, imitating the way light interacts with them and obeying the laws of physics, at least while steering clear of the quantum, and repeats recursively. Why is this so significant? Firstly, it is just so cool. You are creating an image by simulating light rays. Path tracing has pretty much taken over my past year, making path tracer after path tracer. Because of the way it produces an image, and the analogies with the real physics of light, path tracing can produce such photorealistic images that they are used as reference images for developing most other realistic renderers. It is vastly superior to the competition, leading to almost all CGI and media from the last two decades being path traced. Path tracing naturally simulates a huge number of effects, which have to be deliberately bodged into other methods, almost for free. This includes, but is not limited to, soft shadows, ambient occlusion, depth of field, motion blur, reflection, refraction and caustics, the little glowy bits where the light has been focused, and most important of all, global illumination. Global illumination is something hard to describe, even notice, but in its absence it is clear something is missing. The first type of lighting is direct illumination. Direct illumination considers only the light that has travelled directly from a light source to the point being considered. This gives some basic illumination and is where most other rendering methods stop with lighting. But there is more to consider than the light received directly, which is where path tracing excels. The other thing to consider is the light received indirectly, light reflected off other surfaces to the point being shaded. These surfaces don't have to be perfect reflectors like a mirror, just any surface that isn't completely black. This indirect illumination is much more difficult to achieve, currently only possible by tracing light rays. With indirect illumination, you have surfaces being lit while shadowed from the light. The global illumination comes from summing the direct and indirect illumination. Global illumination brings so much to a render, from more definition due to the surrounding lighting to the colour, the, the, this thing, colour bleeding. Anyways, let's get started. Now it's finally time to start the Light Transport Trilogy. Light transport is about calculating the light transported surprise in a certain direction from a surface. This includes both the light emitted from the surface and reflected off it. It can additionally include transmission, the light that has passed through the surface, but to keep it simple we will leave that out for now. So we take our camera, let's just hop into 3D for this, and we generate a ray. This ray is cast into the scene and its intersection calculated. We now need to determine the light reflected and emitted from the surface in the direction the ray came from. What do we have to find this with? To start, we have the point of intersection and the incoming direction, which is the negation of the outgoing direction, the ray's direction. The object directly stores how it emits light in a given direction, which we can use to find the light emitted in the outgoing direction, and we can now ignore the emission. Next, we can use the intersection point and the information about the object to calculate the normal to the surface at this point. Since we are now only considering reflection, we can say that all the light we need to think about is only going to be coming from the hemisphere centred around the normal direction at the intersection point. This is because the normal is the perpendicular vector to the tangent plane and it is impossible for light to intersect this surface point, first having come in from below the tangent by definition of the tangent. Just a quick note, the light coming in from a single direction to the intersection is referred as the radiance. The light coming in from all directions in the hemisphere to the intersection is the irradiance. The next few parts are considering just a single direction in the hemisphere, but are calculated for every direction in the hemisphere. So now we also have to somehow take into account the material of this object. Materials can behave in a wide variety of ways, but they essentially just affect the amount of incoming radiance 
from a certain direction that is reflected in the outgoing direction in consideration. For example, they are responsible for things like roughness and specularity, but also the colour of the object. In path tracing, we represent this as a function of the intersection point, the direction in the hemisphere currently being used, and the outgoing direction, which is the negation of the ray's direction. So, what should we call this function? Just to make things nice and simple, let's call this, perhaps, a bidirectional reflectance distribution function. That sounds fun. Let's just go with BRDF for now. There is just one last bit to consider, something easy to overlook and not at all obvious. If we have a beam of light imparting a certain amount of energy on the surface in a given time, we can slant the beam of light to cover a larger surface area. With the intensity being the energy per unit area, the intensity of the light on the surface decreases with the increase of the area, and thus the increase in the angle between the incoming light direction and the surface normal. The intensity is in fact proportionate to the cosine of that angle. Since both the light direction and the normal are unit vectors, the weighting required is as simple as multiplying by the dot product between them, the cosine of that angle. This is called Lambert's cosine law. We now have all of the elements required for light transport, and with a little wrangling, we can now form... <laughs> So, the rendering equation. It looks very daunting, but is just a formal way of writing up what we just went through. We have the intersection point x. The lowercase omegas represent unit directions in the hemisphere, which itself is donated with the uppercase omega. The normal is just n, so on the left we have the light outgoing from the point x in the outgoing direction omega o, which is the negation of the direction of the incoming ray. This is equal to the light emitted from the point x in the outgoing direction omega o plus the integral over every incoming direction omega i in the hemisphere omega of the incoming light to the intersection point x from the incoming direction omega i weighted by the BRDF fr of the incoming and outgoing directions at the point x. This value is weighted by the dot product of the incoming direction with the normal. Lambert's cosine law. The integral is the scariest part, but it is much simpler than it seems if you just remember that an integral is a continuous sum. This is the continuous sum of the incoming light for each direction with respect to every incoming direction of the hemisphere. This is a relatively simple form of the equation, which can be extended to allow for effects such as motion blur by giving each ray a time and adding the time as a parameter to the functions, or even to allow for light dispersion by giving each ray a wavelength. Now it's time for light transport part 3. Monte Carlo. The light emitted is simple. It is solely dependent on the single known outgoing direction, the negation of that of the ray, and the point of intersection. The irradiance transmitted, the light coming indirectly off of the surface, is not so simple. Rather than calculating the exact radiance received from each of the infinite directions in the hemisphere, which would take quite some time, we must instead approximate it with a finite number of rays. Rather than performing a continuous sum, we are performing a discrete one to estimate the value. This is called a Monte Carlo method. Although standard numerical integration techniques, like trapezoidal integration, are very effective at solving low-dimensional smooth integrals, their rate of convergence for the higher dimensional or discontinuous integrals that are common in rendering is poor, making this method of integration the best choice. Monte Carlo numerical integration methods use randomness to evaluate integrals and converge at a rate independent of the dimensionality of the integrand. One very useful property of Monte Carlo is that one only needs the ability to evaluate an integrand at random points in the domain in order to estimate the value of the integral. The equation to estimate the integral of the function f of x with Monte Carlo is as follows. The integral is roughly equal to 1 over the number of samples 
multiplied by the sum over n of f of a given x value divided by the probability of selecting that x value for the sample, p here being the probability density function. For the sake of simplicity, we can safely ignore the probability density function, PDF, here. I will link to resources going in depth on it, and I may like to cover it in the future. Substituting our integral in, without the PDF, we get this. You may notice that this is exactly equivalent to averaging n samples of the incoming light in a direction in the hemisphere, which is what we do. So, to approximate the light reflected off a surface at the given point, we take samples of the transported light from n different directions in the hemisphere. 